I have written over 500 pages of programs um, and information and things packaged together to help people on their journey to purpose. My son is so loud. JC, 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 Jace, bring it down a notch. Okay, you can, you can sing, just sing a little quieter, okay? Thank you. <laughs>
And the moment I became really clear about this, um, as well as what my identity is, it helped me really frame an understanding about how I could deliver my message and serve you all in a greater and more impactful way. And when it comes down to it, the greatest and most poignant part of my identity is the fact that I consider myself a child of God. The way that some people sometimes interpret my being or my character um, and how I'm able to do things, they're like, oh, you're so joyful all the time. You're, you're so positive. The only way that I'm able to really have this disposition and the only way that I'm really able to move forward with a, with a mindset of, anything is possible you can do this you can do that no one has like put any shackles on you you are free in your joy is because i identify myself as a child of god and i know the promises that come with the identity of being a child of god and that is not to say that being a child of God and having faith doesn't mean you'll come across hard times. It does not mean that you are exempt from trials and tribulations. But what it does mean is that the mindset that you have when those times come around aren't limited to your situations and circumstances. You aren't merely limited by what you can see in front of you, but because you are led by a faith-fueled mindset, you're then able to move forward with whatever the things are that you want to do, whatever your heart's desires are, or whatever it is that God has called you to do because of faith not being bound by fear are you guys picking up what I'm putting down faith fueled and purpose propelled if you've been here for a while you guys know that I talk about this a lot living a life in liberation versus being bound by fear and your limitations but again it's really anchored in this identity of being a child of God and knowing that he wants great things for me he wants me to understand him and know him more. He wants me to share how awesome he is and all the wonderful testimonies um, and, and miraculous works and wonders that he's done in my life um, and also the works and wonders to come. And in the same way that he wants that for me, he wants it for you as well. All of this is a part of the journey and all of it matters. I need you guys to understand that the gifts that you've been given have not been given to you so that you can sit on them and squander them. Like your gifts, your talents, the things that you do so well are meant to be shared, but they're also meant to be used. If you are not using your gifts, Gifts and your talents, your God given, God blessed gifts and talents. You are literally sitting on gold. And I don't just mean it in a monetary sense where you can profit and prosper off of your gifts because that is most definitely something that God also wants for you. But I mean also in your ability to bless others around you and show up in service to the world and the community around you and making it a better place. But most, most excitingly is the fact that you are then able to find your way back to being exactly who God has called you to be, who he's purposed you to be, who you, he designed and fashioned you to be. The moment you have an understanding of who you are, what your identity is, and your freedom and your joy, the moment you're able to make yourself your way back to that, that is the moment that you are truly able to live a free life. So basically y'all, the past year, 33, like many other years, has been a year of self-discovery and growth. But as I take you all on this journey to purpose, I really want you to understand that this journey is one that is meant for you as well. A life that is joy-filled, a life that is faith-fueled, and that is purpose-propelled is one that you are meant to be living. I also wanted to make sure that I highlighted some amazing milestones that have happened over the past year. 15 things that I want to share that took place um, this past year in my first year of creative entrepreneurship in hopes that potentially this inspires you to start something new and also to celebrate the small wins because the small wins lead to great, enormous, ginormous victories that ultimately lead to your success. Because remember, it's not just about the finish line, um, but it's really about the process and committing yourself to the joy in the journey of arriving at success. Um, so here we go. Thing one worth celebrating is the fact that we survived 2020. Okay, a whole COVID, a whole pandemic, 
Not to mention all of the other things that were happening around the world in terms of black news um, and the black experience. But we're here. Uh, we've made it now more than halfway through 2021, and the year is shaping up to be a really good one. There's so much to be grateful for. The second thing that I am sharing as far as a milestone from the past year is the fact that I finally bet on myself full time, full stop, all the way hard. But one of the biggest changes was understanding with clarity that my ministry is joy. I didn't fully get that before. I got that I wanted people to feel good. I got that I wanted people to chase their dreams and like go after their goals, but I didn't really understand why. The past year taught me, thanks to the Holy Spirit, if I'm being completely honest, he taught me that joy is my ministry. That clarity literally changed the game. Not only in understanding that joy is my ministry, that joy through purpose is really the avenue to help people find their way to living a faith-fueled and purpose-propelled life, at least in the way that I understand it. And with that, there's been a ton of really awesome additions um, to my business. But in saying all of this, I also want to like give myself a little bit of a hand clap and a prayer hands and thanks to God for the fact that um, because of this clarity and understanding, oh, faith over fear is really where it's at, I finally made my business in an, an LLC. For almost two decades, I'd been operating without an LLC. I don't know if I should be saying this technically, legally, <laughs> on the internet. So that was awesome. <laughs> the third thing that I'm celebrating, and I kind of already told you guys um, a bit about it, was the fact that I ran my course, Journey to Purpose Vision Casting, three whole times. People pay me to make vision boards. Like, <laughs> what? I've always loved doing arts and crafts as a child, making collages and cutting and pasting things. I never really thought or knew how I was gonna be able to turn this into a business, let alone a career. But God had other plans. That brings me to number four. One of my biggest milestones this year is something that people probably wouldn't see on the outside, but I have written over 500 pages <laughs> of programming. And in addition to this, I created 10 new digital products. I know it sounds wild, but it is really true. And I think that that's another revelation that I've gained about myself over the past year. I'm a writer, y'all. Like, for a very long time, I think I've denied this part of my gifting. I think I've denied this part of myself. But your girl enjoys words. The past year and the pandemic got me hyper-focused and really in the zone of just figuring out how can I help people? How can I make it through this time of being at home and quarantined with more clarity, more peace, more joy, but also setting myself up to win on the other side of this pandemic. And I hope that you guys were doing the same as well. If you weren't and you feel like you need a little help, don't worry, your girl's got you. Head over to the site, take the joy quest. I even revamped it recently, so it's a whole new experience, but I digress. <laughs> um, let's hop into the fifth thing that I learned. With taking the time to sit down and get still and focus on my work and my writing, I realized that um, I'd been chasing quick cash, not even intentionally. My attention was all over the place with making my jewelry. If you guys don't know, I'm also a jewelry designer. So last year I was making waist beads, I was making anklets, I I was, um, what else was I selling? I was making merchandise like mugs and t-shirts and all of those things are up and running and they're available on the site so it wasn't a waste of time. But I realized that focusing my attention on those things was really because I wanted to make quick cash. Um, when really what I needed to be focusing on was the intention, the motivation, and again, what the purpose was long term. And ultimately while having merchandise is great, um, what I really needed to be focused Focusing on was my mission of helping to transform the world through radical joy. The moment I gained clarity around that, I was able to sit down and focus my energy on writing these programs that are really producing and creating the transformational results. The moment I doubled down on what brought me joy, which was joy and working with people, that's the moment that everything became clearer for me. And life started to flow with a lot more ease versus me forcing things into happening that really weren't meant for me to begin with. <laughs>
I don't know how many of y'all can relate to that. Let me know. The fifth thing I'm celebrating is the fact that I created a membership program. And let me tell y'all, it is litty. You don't gotta take my word for it though. Head over to the site or the description box and you'll be able to click on our testimonial page and hear some of the results that people who have gone through the challenge have been able to get. It is bananas. Which brings me to my sixth thing that I'm celebrating. LRM challenges. So far this month marks the 12th month that I am doing LRM challenges and LRM challenges is our challenges program that is done for our members or anybody who desires to join. Let me tell y'all, LRM challenges came to me, it was a vision. It like I cannot take credit for LRM challenges when this is like doing all the amazing things or as it continues to do all the amazing things that I believe and trust it's going to do. I cannot take credit for, the, for this idea. Let me tell you who does the Lord, the Lord and the Holy Spirit get all the glory because it was a full blown vision. One day I will probably share the testimony about how this came to be, but it was something that was like a huh. Thing. And then the next day it was like a, hmm, while I was in devotions, Lord, I think you want me to do this, but I'm not sure. Confirm it so that I know that I'm not making this stuff up um, and you're involved in this mix. And let me tell you, confirm he did. And with that vision, I got to work. And the day that our first LRM challenge started, I received yet another confirmation from the Lord, the Holy Spirit during my morning devotions. Let me tell y'all, I was so hyped. Like nobody couldn't tell me nothing. I was so hyped because I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that I was doing exactly what the Lord wanted me to do and I was moving in obedience. And that is the greatest feeling. It's the greatest feeling. If you're interested in joining our next challenge, head over to the site, but I'm still not done because that brings me to number eight. The eighth thing that your girl is celebrating from my first year of business as a joy strategist is the fact that I did my first consulting gig as a joy strategist. I was hired to work with a nonprofit for a six month contract and working with them as their wellness consultant. It was a group that was focused on domestic violence and domestic violence survivors, um, as well as victims who are trying to just figure out what to do in their what's next. And that was such a mind boggling, um, life changing experience that I am so grateful for. Like my first contracted gig as a joy strategist. Like who would have ever thought not I, <laughs> at, the, at least not at the beginning of the pandemic, because real talk, y'all, I was like, I need to build a new business. Who is going to want to pay me to talk about joy and purpose? But God, <laughs> I'm telling you, God always has like the final say. And he's just, it's just so cool, man, how he works. The ninth thing that came to happen in this past year is the fact that I got to thinking, I like writing. I want to talk to people about joy and purpose. I've been writing a lot. How can I turn this into a message that people can really deep dive into? So your girl figured she'd write a book. Yes, but not just one book, two books. <laughs> <laughs> so in the past year, as I've been writing a lot, um, I'm also in the process of writing a whole book and pitching it to places. So that is something that's really cool and that I never saw happening and that the Lord has just placed on my heart. So that's what we're doing. The 10th thing we're celebrating, and yes, I gave it jazz hands, is the fact that I am doing this podcast because y'all know it's been a struggle, right? the struggle of struggles <laughs> all right so 2018 i received the instructions 2019 i started drafting episodes the end of 2019 i actually started to record an episode or two in 2020 though the lord was like you need to do this podcast but what was i doing instead not doing my podcast <laughs> So in 2020, I recommitted to the vision, um, though there was a bit of a pause that was put on the vision because I was understanding the other parts of what God wanted me to do. And in 2021, your girl's been doing the thing because if you listen to, I believe it was episode 11, I was hit with some conviction that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. We have 23 new episodes that did not exist before. And that is kind of major considering the struggle that it has been. Um, but I think that the biggest part we're celebrating in all of this is the fact that I figured out what feels good. And with that, I was able to create a process that brought me 
progress <laughs> and I highlighted what the process was and how you can actually utilize the process to progress in your goals and your visions as well um, that's an episode 22 of the podcast and it's actually the first one that we did um, here on YouTube so go check it out not right now because you know we're still chatting but after this conversation is over make sure you go look at that one next because I'm sure that it'll help you as you progress in your goals and your vision for this year heading into 2022. <laughs> Gosh, your girl is getting thirsty, but I got a couple more things to share as far as milestones. The 11th thing that I'm celebrating is the fact, or is it, is it 11? All right, at this point, I've lost track of what number it is, but I'm celebrating the fact that um, I switched up my site because that took a lot of work. New colors, new theme, new energy, new vibe. The 12th milestone is the fact that I hired my first vendor. <laughs> And she's a VA. Like basically, you name it as it relates to this business, I've done it on my own, thankfully, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and really just God's ability to give me vision um, and understanding and patience as I um, figure things out when I don't have complete understanding. And it's only by His grace that I'm able to do any of it. But y'all, yeah, to God be the glory, this year was the first year that I was able to hire someone to help me with some things. Um, and that was awesome. <laughs> More of that, please, and thank you, Lord. Episode 11 was called Be Strong and Courageous. And that was inspired by the theme that the Lord had given me as far as what it is that I should be focusing on for this year. But one of the things that he also made very evident to me and very apparent was the fact that in order to execute his vision, it cannot be carried out by one person and one person alone. At that point, I was reading um, the book of Genesis and Exodus, and I was reading about Moses and how he was able to build out the tabernacle, which was a vision that had been given to him from the Lord, but how he himself was not the person to execute the vision. He was given the vision, but then he was also given people to support him in his efforts to build God's tabernacle. But the biggest lesson that I've gained from the past year is endurance, perseverance, and sticking to my guns. Oh my gosh, if there's anything that 2020 and my Jesus year has taught me, that is it. Endurance, perseverance, and sticking to my guns. Because really and truly, the moment you're able to do that with clarity and in alignment with faith, you are able to pursue and create amazing things that you may not even completely understand for yourself, but God knows exactly why he's put you in that position and why he's put certain desires and plans on your heart. Um, and I think that that's the biggest lesson that I've gained. Also the most fruitful. All of that said, y'all, I've been talking for a really long time and I am ready to wrap this up. But if you're wondering what some of my plans are for 34 or for the next year, you got to stay tuned. There's a lot to keep up with. I hope that you guys stay tuned and that you continue to follow the journey um, as I am journeying one feel good thing at a time. But in the meantime, if you're hearing all of these things and wondering what a life lived in freedom the identity of your joy and your freedom lived in purpose looks and feels like actually let's do that real quick i want you guys to close your eyes and envision your life lived in the freedom of your joy like is your eyes closed close your eyes and envision your life lived in freedom in the freedom of your joy what would it look like what would it feel like what would it taste like what would it be like? Whatever that vision is, understand that it's possible the moment you commit to living your life in joy. If you are someone who needs help getting put on path for your journey to purpose, that's exactly why I'm here. I am here to help you. Not only am I here to help you, it is my joy and my absolute pleasure to help you in your journey to purpose and making your vision a reality. And that is exactly what a journey to purpose is about. So, all of that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up with a real tight bow and say, welcome to the new crew, y'all. Consider this your official welcome to the Journey to Purpose 
crew okay i'm still trying to figure out a name for us though if i'm being completely honest and i would love your suggestions when i mentioned it to my brother and i was like oh we could be called the joy riders get it like a bad a bad behind crew of people who live radically in their joy he lovingly looked at me and said i think you could do better <laughs> <laughs> so I am currently accepting suggestions. Um, for, <laughs> why are you like a creep? Bye, Aria. Oh my gosh. I still kind of like the idea of joy writers, but let me know in the comments below. All right, if you're looking at this on social or if you are watching this on YouTube or even if you're listening to the podcast, leave me a comment letting me know what your life lived in joy and freedom would look and feel like, but also what the name of our crew should be. Because whatever we call ourselves in our community, just know that you're a part of it, but I also want us to have a cool name, okay? Accepting all suggestions starting now. <laughs> In the meantime, if you'd like to follow me and my journey as I journey to purpose with you all, you can follow me across social media at Erica Lasan on Instagram is mostly where I play. And until we chat again next week, I hope that you have a wonderful week and that you remember to follow your joy. One feel good thing at a time. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>So I am currently accepting suggestions. Um, for, why are you like a creep? Bye, Aria. Oh my gosh. Uh,